Hello YouTube, and welcome back to another Minecraft Hardcore video. My name is Rose Juice, and today we're going to be going to the Nether. I'm pretty excited, but also pretty nervous. So, let's go ahead and get started with the video then. I just opened this chest, I don't know why, but something I forgot to mention last time was I actually got a trident. I wasn't even using looting, and I know it's like super rare and pretty insane that I got that, but like, here's the thing. In, in my long-term survival world on Bedrock Edition that I haven't played in a while, my base was like right by a river. And so drowns would spawn there constantly. And I think, like, tridents are easier to get on bedrock. I think more drowns have them. Yeah, anyway, that's, like, how I got that. It was over there when I was swimming over to the village. So I'm pretty prepared already. I have full diamond armor, diamond tools from villager trading. I have a water bucket. That's not going to be useful in the nether, though. But before we go to the nether, I want to do a bit of preparation. Oh, I also lower, I also upgraded to 1.18.1. So obviously, I don't really want to die in hardcore mode. And so I've taken into account, like, a bunch of different possibilities for what could happen when I entered the nether. I'm trying- there's like a ravine around here I'm trying to find. Like, including just spawning straight into a bastion with a bunch of piglin brutes. And so we need to get a bunch of items that I think will help me. So what I'm trying- there's like a ravine around here somewhere that'll take me down to some lava where I want to mine up some obsidian. And I'm gonna get like half a stack. That way if I somehow lose my portal, then, which I'll probably write, just write down the coordinates to. So if, like, if I somehow lose that, then I can just build another one. I'll be super far away from the house, but it's easier to travel through the nether than the, or the overworld than the nether, even if it's slower. Okay, here we are. So this is a lava lake that I poured, um, water all over. So the best way to mine up obsidian is to, like, place water like that and then just mine it. I think this pickaxe has, like, efficiency two, so this shouldn't be too bad. Okay, efficiency three. An unenchanted diamond pickaxe on Java Edition takes nine nine seconds to mine obsidian, and so efficiency three makes that even faster. Okay, I have 34 obsidian. That's a little bit more than half a stack, but that's good. So now we can head back up to the surface. You need 10 minimum to build a portal. If you include the corners, then that's 14. I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna build it without the corners for now, like just so I can conserve on the obsidian while I'm in the Nether. Now I think for some more items, let's go back to the base. I should have grabbed a lava bucket while I was there, because a water bucket is completely useless in the Nether. But actually, there's like some ravines that have lava, so it's not that I can just grab it from there. There's one. There's one I was just in. And there's one over there. Because a lava bucket is more useful than a water bucket when you're in the nether. Okay, we're in the storage room. So, how much gold do we have? That's actually pretty good. So, I want I want gold for two reasons. For golden apples. If um, piglins are attacking me, I'll just throw down some gold and uh, they should take it. So, let's smelt all this gold. This will take a bit, but while we're doing that, we can get some more items. Let me just turn this into here. So, we have 13 apples. So far, I can make two golden apples golden apples will kind of help me if i'm in a scary situation i also want gold to try and trade with piglins for a fire resistance potion as soon as possible now if i were to theoretically spawn in a bastion um what should I do about piglin roots well that's what that's what the lava bucket is going to be most useful for it'll also be useful for like taking out hoglins and stuff i also want to bring like two or three buckets of milk if i spawn directly into a fortress some wither skeletons will give me the wither effect and um, drinking milk will, will remove that. So I'm gonna need like four buckets in total. So there we have this one. We'll just put lava in. We're gonna need one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, um, three extra. There we go. Um, this, these will be the milk buckets. Now there's a cow here, so let's just do that. There we go. Three buckets of milk. Next up, I want like way more arrows than I'm realistically ever gonna need. Well, maybe not that much. Probably like a stack or two will be good, because I don't have infinity on this bow yet. I'm going down here to grab some emeralds. Okay, I don't think that's going to be enough, but I think I have stuff to sell to villagers at the village. 32 is probably already enough, but the whole thing that I'm doing here is trying to just be better safe than sorry. Here we are at the village. Uh, these Fletchers will sell me arrows, uh, but not this one. Actually, I could get arrows of leaping, but those are completely useless, at least for the time being. Okay, that's there's three Fletchers here. Uh, I think this is the last one. I think this is the other one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so yeah, that's 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 good. That's three entire stacks. That might that might waste on inventory space, but uh, maybe not. I'm thinking of some other things that could be useful. Maybe I can bring some supplies to make to make potions of uh, fire resistance if I manage to find a fortress and get the resources from the fortress that I need for that. 
before, like, so that I can make, if I happen to get the resources to just brew a fire resistance potion myself before I get it from trading with piglins. So we have gold, we have obsidian, golden apples, milk, arrows, tons of blocks too, and tons of wood, even though you can now get wood in the nether after the nether update. There should be enough blocks. Oh yeah, I want, I want to just straight up gold, and I turn that on to golden apples. Huh, that, that was a dumb idea. I think that's okay. One ingot will have to do then. So what, what will I need from the overworld to make a brewing stand? I need these. I need to craft the brewing stand. I need three cobblestone, which are right here, plus one blaze rod, which I'll get from the nether fortress. For the actual potion, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need some bottles. So let's let's smelt three sand for three glass, which turns to three bottles. Oh, it's night. That's not good. There. Hopefully, not too many mobs spawned. Um, so let's smelt this down. And then I'm also gonna need nether wart, which I'll get in there. Magma cream, which I'll get, like, basically anywhere in the nether. And then redstone, if I want to, um, make it last longer. Now I really only need three bottles, because I only will really need the fire resistance potion if I fall in lava. So that means, like, three bottles. This redstone will make it last for eight minutes instead of three, which it is by default. And so that would mean, like, if I fall in lava, then I have eight times three is 24 minutes to get out. Yeah, so let's make the bottles like that. I think the last thing I'm gonna want is an iron door and two buttons, or one button and one pressure plate. The reason I want those is so I can build, like, a safe spot. Like a, like a safe, not really a base, it's just gonna be like a cobblestone room. So let's grab, let's grab the iron doors. So I'll make three iron doors just in case. And then I can craft these without a crafting table, and it'll save inventory space to keep them as stone for now. And I think that's just about everything. Hopefully there's not something crucial that I'm forgetting. Um, but I guess we'll find out, won't we? Um, and I think the only mob that's still here is the skeleton. How did I one-hit you? Oh, it probably took damage from sunlight. So, where do I want to build the portal? I think I'll build it, like, over here. Oh, yeah, I'd love the wa the lava is, like, the last thing. That is kind of far away from the base. Or, like, not really, but if I have to run back and forth a bunch of times, it's going to be kind of annoying. It's fine. So, there's two, three, there. Uh, I already made a flint and steel a while ago. Uh, but before I light that, let me get the lava. Um, I'll put the water here. If I happen to catch on fire, then, you know, maybe I can quickly make my way back here and put myself out. Now, there's a ravine over here. Now, hold on. In case I fall, let me just grab this so I can maybe save myself with this. So, there's a ravine right here, and you can see there's lava. So, let's just dump this down for so I can get back up. And let's just do that and grab the lava. I'm, I'm switching it to my offhand in case I get the, like fake water slash lava glitch. I think that may have been fixed in 1.17, but you know what? I, I'm used to doing that in speedruns anyway, so yeah. Let me just be careful not to accidentally set myself on fire right now. Let's keep that there, because it's funny that that doesn't look right. Now one last thing before we go in. Let me turn this entity distance, Let me or two things actually. Let me turn this entity distance up. It'll lag the game out a little bit. Let me open the pie chart. So in 1.18, I think I need to go press the numbers next to the words tick, level, block entities they're showing all block entities loaded in on my render distance right now and i'll explain why i want that in a minute let's light this and go through let's take a deep breath no i don't, I don't feel like it okay so let's open the f3 menu well no 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 there let's open it with the pie chart and as soon as i get into the nether i'm pausing the game okay i pressed it too early okay we're in a crimson forest now let me explain what i'm looking for you see this entity counter here specifically the second number because this is pretty high up um I think there could be a bastion. It does not look like I spawned in a fortress or bastion. That's good. Um, hopefully I spawned near it. Now I'm also looking at here. I need to like close and reopen this to refresh it. If I, s I can see what is here to get some ideas of what's going on. So let's unpause the game in three, two, no, let's just go ahead and do that. I did not mean to take a screenshot. All right, uh, let me, oh, I didn't put this in there. That was, oopsie. I just need to be I just need to block this off as soon as I can. Uh, this is actually like a pretty good spot that I could have spawned. So let's just make it so I spawn in a safe room. Alright there, this is fine. I wanna make everything be cobblestone. Cobblestone is pretty good in the nether because ghasts can't destroy it. Come to think of it, I don't know if they can destroy crimson or whatever whatever this is called, warped nether warp blocks. Which fortunately you can't turn into nether warp. But whatever. Okay, now let me do this in case uh, there's lava behind here. I did not mean to. I meant to place this there. There we go. Uh, normally in the Nether, I'd swap this lava bucket out for a fire resistance potion, but since I don't have that yet, yeah, 
Okay, it doesn't seem there's lava. Although I'm not done digging it out, am I? Uh, also, who knows? Maybe we'll find ancient debris digging this out. Uh, this is like that safe room I'm talking about. There's something kind of important I should do. So hoglins can act, don't actually have a light level that they can spawn in. So even if even though this is lit up, um, hoglins can still spawn in here, unless it's a spawn-proof block, like a slab. So that's why I'm craft. That's what, that's why I'm gonna make this the floor in here be slabs. I know there's another act, but like um, this is inside, and I'm just doing that for now anyway. There, this will be a safe spot. Um, I think I'm gonna go back to the overworld to put some of the stuff away, since I know where I'm spawning now. I should also put like a fence around here, so that like one time in my survival world, it wasn't on Java. It wasn't a hardcore world. I went through the nether portal and there was just a creeper waiting for me because it went through there during the night. So I need to get a fence around here too. Okay, put some fences around the nether portal and made it look great. Are you ready? I know it's just temporary for now. Let's pick the- I also- I also got some more torches and stuff um, before I go back in there and actually start exploring. Let's go. I'm gonna pause the game just in case again. Okay. So now let's take a look at this. We have a mob spawner. That means, that means there's A, a fortress, or B, a treasure bastion. There's 130 entities, it looks like, so there could be a bastion. I don't think I want to go to the bastion right now, but just to see where it is, or it could be, I'm not 100% sure. If they're like 150 or more, then I would be like 100% certain. So I'm looking at the first entity number to see if it spikes depending on where I'm looking. So there seems to be like 20 in that direction. And so that's like the biggest amount. But then again, I had I have noticed a lot of mobs tend to spawn in crimson forests. But if there is a bastion, it's probably that way. All right. But anyway, now let's get now let's get exploring. Let's make the pre let's make a pressure plate for right here, and then a button for the outside. There, so I should be able to get in now. I know this is like the worst place I could have reached out. I'll try to make this as safe as I can. I'm trying to just get down to a safe area. And, you know, maybe I should also try to see if I can find a fortress. The way I'm going to do that is by Pyre. Apparently, in, like, 1.17+, plus, it's kind of glitchy. So, I think it's a good idea to restart the world before I do this. Or, like, rejoin it, not delete it and start a new world. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, let's turn on chunk borders with F3 and G. You can't really see it because I'm not really near one. Now, let's do this. So, I currently am on 16 chunk render distance. No, 13. So I'm going to want to turn this down to two, like this, refresh it. Okay, it's being glitchy or it's spawner is super close. Let me rejoin this again. Like basically, that's so I want to change my render distance a whole bunch to see where a mob spawner does and doesn't pick up, or to show up, I mean. And then I can look at my chunk borders and stuff to see where that is. All right, so we want to increase this until something pops up. Specifically, I mean, a chest is kind of useful to know if it's there. Okay, I think that popped up at 12, and that popped up at 13. So let's decrease this back down to 2. So it's 13 chunks away, the mob spawner that is, and it's doing that again. So let me rejoin the world again. So we want to set it to 1 below the uh, thing. 1 below the mob spawner. Uh, chunk borders are on. We want to check all four directions to see when the mob spawner pops up. And that means, like, here's a chunk border. Let's see if it pops up going through this chunk. It does not, so that means the mob spawner is not in that direction. Let me just patch this back up, because I don't really need this here. Now let's let's try this direction now. There's a chunk border. Okay, it still, doesn't, it still doesn't pop up, so it's not that direction. Now let's check this way. Still doesn't pop up. Um, it could be at a corner, so I, since I'm, like, right by one, I might as well check. Okay, like, if it was at, if, if it's kind of diagonally from here. It might be being glitchy again, and it's just gonna say it's not in any direction. Hopefully it's not, though. So if I just do this, it still doesn't pop up. So either it's corners, or it's being glitchy. And honestly, I don't feel like trying to figure it out right now, so, yeah. But what we do know is that there is a mob spawner nearby. Or by that, I mean 13 chunks in some direction. Let me turn this off. Okay, let's go, like, right here. I hear... I hear... I hear mobs, and that's making me really nervous. Ah! Go away. Maybe I shouldn't say things like that. This is some kind of harder traverse terrain here. Uh, let me see if I can see anything if I increase my render distance. Also, there was a change in 1.18.1 .1 that changed fog, so fog... You can see further with the same render distance before the fog starts to show up. I don't know if that applies to the nether, but if it does, then 
that kind of helps because the fog makes you be able to see like way less than you might think while you're in the nether like based on your render distance that is oh i forgot a gold helmet that was that's like a super important thing because it makes piglins don't attack me unless i attack them first anyway okay back to back to the overworld we go for like the eighth time oh wait i would used all the gold again on the golden apples huh and maybe i'll just try to mine it in the nether because nether gold responds there but I, I will just empty out my inventory again. While I'm here, I'm also going to make a boat. Even though I could do that in the nether. That'll help me. That, that can help me traverse. And also, if I fall, I can MLG with a boat. Now, I think we'll, we won't come back instantly this time. But that, I don't, I honestly don't even believe that. <laughs> okay, so I'm on the hunt for nether gold ore at the moment. Which is that stuff. Uh, a shovel isn't very useful in the nether unless I'm in a soul sand valley. So let me just put this here so I can use this um, to MLG if I have to. Uh, and I can also use it to boat off the edge like this. Uh, I didn't mean to jump at the boat there, but if I'm going off of a high distance, you can sometimes still take fall damage for some reason. So doing that will make that not happen if I get out of the boat right before that. The distance I fell there was like completely unnecessary to do that. But like I said, I didn't even mean to. I see some gold there. It'll be easier to get to that. For gold helmet, since I already have one ingot, I'm going to need 36 gold nuggets. Actually, it doesn't really matter that I don't have projectile protection. Versus, yeah, actually, it would probably be better to get rid of this. I mean, for, like, for now, that is. Let me also hide, let me block myself in so no piglins see me and get mad at me. Okay, I'm, like, too short. So let me stack up there. I should be aware of piglins with crossbows. And I'm going to turn hitboxes on just to highlight any mobs. That's probably unnecessary, but, like... I don't care. I, I don't want to die. Okay, there we go. That's that's enough. So let's place a crafting table. Turn all these into ingots. I have eight in total. So yeah, let's put on the uh, golden boots. Okay, so I think I want to try to find the one of the structures, so a fortress or a bastion. I'm gonna go in this direction because the E ray. That's what the thing where I lower my FOV is. Um, it's also called micro lensing. Was pointing me to. Watch this. Oh, that was so cool, wasn't it? Probably not. Um, while I'm here, I think I, I think I should get some, uh, of that, unless it falls in there. Some of this crimson wood. And I'll get some, once I get to the warped forest, I'll get some of that too. Uh, this will also be useful as blocks. This type of wood doesn't burn as well. Oh, maybe I should have written, written down the coordinates of the portal. I'll write down the coordinates of here, which is close enough. Okay, that's fine. There's a big open area here. Uh, I'm gonna increase my render distance. Does anything pop up? Uh, hold on. Uh, increasing this will help too. Um, it'll help look through the fog. Well, kind of. If I look at the edges of my screen. And I'll just keep it all the way up. Because, why not? I really don't want to bridge across this lava. So, we're not going to do that. So, instead, we're going to go into this warped forest. Uh, any entities? There's like 160 now. Uh, let me get into, like, a safe area so I don't actually look at any endermen. Because I'm going to do the E-ray again. So, lower the FOV. And see where the entities are. They're all over there. But that's like back where I already was. I think it's because like I rendered in the entities over there. So that may have broken that a little bit. But they can despawn. Like they're not name tagged or anything. So maybe if I rejoin the world that would fix that. I don't know. Maybe I do need to bridge across the lava. Uh, there's no ghasts. And so this is terrifying. There's absolutely no way I'm going to speed bridge here. Okay, it looks like I made it, basically. Okay, now I'm safe. Uh, it'll still be terrifying walking across that. But, okay. Maybe I should get doors ready. Maybe I'll pull the dream play he did, where he makes a safe, like, air pocket in the lava using doors. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I see gold here. Might as well mine this. Okay, it was literally one.
Okay, we're back at the portal. I think I'm done for now. Okay, hold on. Let me turn the, the entity distance back down. So yeah, I guess that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. But that was going to the nether. So if you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. So I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.